Good day, friends, and um, welcome to Prophetic Switch again. Today, we are going to be talking about, we're going to continue the series uh, talking about the women in the Bible. And today, we're going to talk about Miriam. Miriam, known as the sister of Moses and Aaron, known as a prophet, and also known as a leader. Now, if you are first time seeing this and your first time on this channel, please, you can check out the videos that are just going to pop out right now. We've spoken about some other women in the Bible. And today, we are going to talk about Miriam. So, let's get started. Great. So before we continue, I'll just um, ask you to subscribe into this channel if you'd want to. Um, you know, click on the on the on the bell thing there so that you can always uh, be aware of um, new videos that we are going to be uh, posting up. My name is Abdul, and I'm into the prophetic ministry for about eight years now. I've uh, been fully into the ministry and I'm bringing in my point of view and sharing some biblical aspects with you about prophetic ministry, sharing prophecies and um, also, you know, teaching about the prophetic culture. Now, check out the book of Exodus and chapter two. That is um, the place where, um, you know, the whole history started and a lot of Miriam has been, um, you know, uh, spoken about. Now, in Exodus two, and verse 1, it says, A certain man in the house of Levi um, went to marry a Levite woman, right? The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw how beautiful he was, she hid him away for three months. So let us stop here a little bit. Now, previously before this, uh, Rubel has gone to uh, Pharaoh and um, spoke that the children of Israel um should um you know be given less labor the children of israel should be freed the children of israel should um you know have their freedom now uh pharaoh having had that wasn't happy at all and um decided to punish them give them you know to make their jobs more and all that then um an aide helped to pharaoh now um, advised Pharaoh, if you check that in the book of Exodus chapter 1, advised Pharaoh that, uh, you know, he had to do something. And there was this prophecy. There was this prophecy already that um, from the Jewish cult, from the Jewish um, you know, community, someone was going to come and uh, be a prof, or, you know, be the person who would lead Israel, uh, the Jewish people, out of Egypt. Now, Pharaoh, knowing that, decided and gave he gave a decree that the firstborn, or sorry, the child, the the male child of the Hebrew women should be thrown into River Nile. Now, if you read the Bible and read the Torah, it gives a different um, you know explanation in this. Now, Rabbi Gomer was speaking about uh, this. He said, now this is the interpretation from the Torah that raises a certain man at the house of Levi that was actually the father of uh, Moses and the woman he's, he married, which we know as Jezebel, who is the mother of um, Dave, of, of sorry, of Moses. The father of Moses was named Amran. Now he was the father of Moses and you have to understand that he was one of the leaders of the Jewish in at, at slavery in slavery in Egypt so him now knowing that Pharaoh wanted to kill all the firstborns what he did was to divorce his wife Jezebel he had to divorce her so they wouldn't give birth anymore and he wouldn't put his family into jeopardy now when this was said if you now read back if you, let's go back to the book of Exodus chapter 2 and getting down to verse 3 follow me when she could hide him no longer, she got a wicker basket uh, for him and, you know, she put him into uh, a river Nile. Now, before we get into that, if you read the, ter uh, the, 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 the Torah, it says that um, when Amran um, decided to divorce um, Jezebel, his daughter Miriam as a den, because they had Miriam and Aaron, his daughter Miriam as a den, said this that her father was weakest was more wicked than 
um, than Pharaoh, saying that Pharaoh decided or said that all firstborn, all, all child boys, the boys only should be killed. But you, that, you know, div divorcing my mother makes it understand that you are killing both the men and women. Is that, you know, like you don't, you, you're even worse than Pharaoh. And when she was saying that, she was six years old. She was the first woman in the Bible ever, the first child at six. As that young started prophesying, someone I think started prophesying when he was about 14 or 17, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. So she was the first ever in the Bible. And she prophesied that um, her mother, who is Jezebel, is going to give birth to a son who is going to liberate the Egyptian, uh, who is going to li liberate the Jewish from Egypt. Now, she gave that prophecy. So when um, Amram heard his daughter, who was six years old, giving such prophecy, he went back to remarry Jezebel. And that is what we see in the book of Exodus chapter 2 and verse 1. A certain man of the house of Levin uh, went and married a woman from the house of, uh, a Levit woman also. How do you know that? Read down, let's go. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, and his sister stationed herself at a distance to learn what will befall him. So if they just got married in um, Exodus uh, chapter 2 and verse 1, how comes in verse 5, in verse 4, sorry, he already has a sister, right? So it doesn't make sense. Now, if you read the Torah, it gives the, 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 the Torah, it gives you uh, more of that information. So with that now, he now went to remarry his wife. And then she gave birth to Moses. And then that was when you see, it says, and when the woman conceived and bore a son, Exodus 2 and verse 1, when she bore a son, when she saw how beautiful he was, she hid him for three months. Then the Torah, it says that um, he was glowing in glory and they had to hide him for three months. But you know, you can't hide a child for too long. Now, the she went to river nile that's we're talking about jechebed first she went to river nile to throw moses into the river now why would she have done that if you have i mean you know thinking about that really brings up a lot of questions now she was i mean she's a jewish she understands that if god is going to kill my son then let me do it myself she went to throw him into nile and left because she left him for good. She left him for good. Now, this is where you have to understand what the role that Miriam played in the existence of Moses. This is what she did. And the Bible says here, Exodus 2 and verse 4, and his sister stationed herself at a distance to learn what will befall him. So, first of all, you understand she gave the prophecy. Now, you have to remember, understand, at six years old, she gave a prophecy that her brother Moses was going to be the guy who will liberate Israel from um, Egypt as slaves. Now, before then, Moses never even had a name yet, right? Because the name Moses had never ever existed now she was stay she was stationed to see what would happen to him then the third woman in the life of moses who really played a drastic role in saving the life of moses the bible says in exodus chapter 2 and verse um five the daughter of pharaoh came down to bathe in nile when her median walked along the nile she spied the bas basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to fetch it. Now, um, in, in, in the Torah, the name of that daughter of Pharaoh is Bithya, right? She found the child and then she sent her slave to bring it. Now, you have to understand that immediately she saw him. This is what she said. When she opened it, she saw that the child was, uh, it was a child. A boy crying. She took pity on it and said, this must be a Hebrew child. Now, first of all, it was so, so understandable for her to know that he's a Hebrew child because he was circumcised. The circumcision was only been practiced in the Hebrew culture. So, um, 
she now taking the child, you know, something happened miraculously because this is a daughter of Pharaoh who has decreed that all male child should be thrown into Nile. And she is right now in the river Nile taking a bath. And then she sees that child. The first thing she was supposed to do logically is either A, to kill the child, B, to take the child to the authorities, right? So that they could handle it because she knew that her father said that he should be killed. But she had pity over him, right? She had pity over him. Now, while all of this was taking place, Miriam seeing that the daughter of Pharaoh has picked up her brother, which she has prophesied earlier on that he was going to liberate their people from the hands of Pharaoh and from Egypt. She now ran to her and said, hey, do you need to breastfeed this child? He is a Hebrew child. Let me find you a Hebrew woman who will breastfeed him. Now, Bithia hearing that saying, okay, well, fine, well, we'll go ahead. She now went to invite the mother, who is Jezebel, to take care of her own biological son, right? So what has Miriam done that here? She prophesied the word and made sure that the prophecy came to pass. So she took an active role because she knew the will of God over Moses. And she was never settled down with the fact that Moses would die in Nile. She was never settled down with the fact that he was just an ordinary boy. She knew it because it was revealed to her by God. Then her father, then her father said, wow, now indeed you are really a prophet because you prophesied about this even before Moses was born. So technically speaking, we can say that the, the, uh, the fact that um, Jechobit and Amron came back together was a prophecy that was released by Miriam, right? Isn't that wonderful? I mean, she played that very vital role. But one person also I see here who has played a very, very vital role also is uh, Bitia, the daughter of Pharaoh. She went against the decree of a father to keep a Hebrew child. And everybody knew that he was a Hebrew child. Everybody knew that Moses was not, was not, was just an, an Egyptian. Everybody knew it. Now, that was part of the prophecy that was given by Miriam and everything walked, you know, in line with that. Now, after that, um, after that, BTA now gave Moses the name Moses, which means literally that she drew him out of River Nile. So the same weapon that was created or that was um, decreed to kill Moses, she drew him out of it. So she actually saved Moses from death. That is wonderful. Also, Miriam in the Bible was uh, called Miriam the prophet. Now, as I then, she was the only one who was, you know, that language was used. Miriam the prophet. As I then, and they said, Miriam the prophet, the sister of Aaron. Now, you must have thought about this. Why then is she only the sister of Aaron? She is also the sister of Moses, isn't it? But no, it was said that she was the, the sister of Aaron. Why? Because she prophesied, she was already known or acknowledged to be a prophet before the birth of Moses. And the Bible now says that when they crossed the Red Sea, after crossing the Red Sea, Miriam as a leader gathered all the women together to pray the tambourine, to sing and dance. That was a prophetic act. That was a prophetic move that really created that atmosphere and knowledge that she um, was not only a prophet, but also a leader. Also being a leader, Miriam was accepted also as a prophet and that's why first of all it was written there and then we have amos that gave a you know he gave a confirmation if you check out the book of amos chapter one and verse nine he said and and you know what we'll god was speaking through amos and saying i gave you leaders moses aaron and Miriam. So it was known to be a prophet in the Bible that played a vital role about the liberation of the Israelites out of Egypt. She 
prophesied about the birth of Moses and she made sure that that prophecy came to pass in the fact that she didn't only believe it but she took steps into it and uh, that is something interesting and that's something wonderful so I just wanted to share that with you so you can understand that there are a lot of people who have especially women who have played a vital role in the existence of um of, 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 of the Israelites, our faith, we as Christians, and something we can apply into today, seeing and understanding that God can use anyone to do his work, to prophesy, to pray, to heal, and to bring liberty over people. God bless you and bless you. If you love this video, please remember to put a like on it, share it. I would really appreciate that. And hey, you got questions, please go ahead and ask me your questions. I will answer you as soon as that is possible. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Bye.